Warning, the content of this vlog is super long. You're buying stuff, one thing about the spa is all about the line. It's Thursday, it's the official start of Comic-Con for most people who don't have uh, preview night. So I guess we were lucky to have one, so there. For today, I'll be attending a lot of panels. I'm not so sure if I can video all of them, so let's see how it goes. Alright, I'll be passing by the Robotech booth, meet a couple of friends, and probably shoot a bit of cosplay on the floor. Good luck to me. I'll probably just use this M6 and I'm good to go. <laughs> Okay, so we're walking around, it's lunch, so I guess lots of, most of the, most of the restaurants are pretty full up. So I just got myself a quick sandwich off Subway and we're on our way. Good morning guys, it's Friday morning. It's uh, the day of our panel, which is probably the highlight of my trip because it's the first time I get to do a panel in San Diego. It's all thanks to Pat over there. Hey. Yeah. So yeah, so um, we're still doing our slides as usual. We're cramming, uh, but we'll get it out in a jiffy. Uh, should be done in an hour and I'd be heading out doing and watching some more panels actually. And guess what? I actually found my Dragon Ball shirt, which I get to wear today. Where is it? There? Where is it? Oh, there it is. There you go. Okay. Hey, hey, and I get to go to the Dragon Ball event as well. Okay. Catch you later. annual thing every year whenever you go to Comic Con there's always a group shot for Marvel and DC characters always found in the spot behind the convention center I'm kind of built down on cosplay and now I work on build sets and 
fashion shows. So I've done um, the Met Gala, Victoria's Secret, um, all kinds of stuff. Oh, so that's me. <laughs> <laughs> So, hi, I'm Jay. I'm from the Philippines. I flew halfway across the world just for, for the con. Um, I'm a commercial photographer back home, so I work basically for print ads and stuff for Coca Cola, Microsoft, and all that. But, you know, in between all that, I shoot cosplay for fun because I'm a frustrated artist and I can't draw for <laughs> So, I overcompensated with pictures and graphics with some friends of mine in the post production industry. There you go. And for those ones who are asking questions later, I have a, my book to give away. By the way, uh, just to announce, um, I do my cosplay work for charity, so all the prints in the books actually go to an orphanage back home. If you follow the Her Universe Fashion Show, I won a year ago, two years ago, with a Falcor inspired design and also did an Alien Queen the year before. I was on Cosplay Melee, I run a fashion company, I do manufacturing, I work at Universal Studios, and I also just recently did a lot of the costume work on Titans in the specialty fabrication department. So if you want to ask me about Robin, I can tell you nothing. <laughs> I am, uh, well, I'm kind of like that. I'm a photographer. Uh, I used to draw, but uh, I took my hand in the valley and got a purple tunnel, and I got to photography because of that. And uh, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've photographed Crossway for a long time, but I figured it was time to kind of do something different. So I tried to put more of a fantasy spin, make it more like, uh, you know, I guess do more storytelling in my photography. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I, I'm an artist at Marvel. Uh, I draw the runaways and I have done redesigns, you know, a lot of redesigns. Hello, everybody. All right, so I'm going to start with some questions that I <laughs> um, So, as an artist or costume designer, how closely do you consider functionality when designing characters? Um, and does this boil down to like texture, applique, accessories, all of that stuff? Sure, anyone. <laughs> uh, yes, definitely consider all of those things. Um, a big thing, I guess, working on Chinese was making sure that one suit was the hero suit and then another was for stunts. So some of the fabrics we purchased would be, you know, one had more stretch than the other, or special extra panels that could grow and move with the stunt guy. And especially after that, I learned to incorporate a lot of those things within cosplay, so that I could be comfortable because, man, I like a lot there. <laughs> um, so, yeah. No, sorry. No, it's definitely a thing. It's, um, it's interesting when you work with people and they're not um, seamstresses or tailors themselves. They come up with designs and put it on your table and like, that's really nice, but that's not how gravity works. <laughs> that's not how human bodies work, but okay. And then you kind of have to find a middle road, middle road between like, okay, this actually has to fit someone. How are they going to fit into this? How is it going to be, you know, how is an actor able to perform wearing this costume? So it's always a really interesting discussion and I think it's really good for um, people to, you know, collaborate together on I've, uh, I've done some work for film and video uh, set work too, and yeah, it's very similar. The design, Chris is one of the only artists, or one of my favorite artists, who actually seems to think about it a little bit. Your designs so, are sometimes, so sometimes. Well, and if they're not, they're, it's on purpose. So usually when I'm in that situation, I'll often have to completely sacrifice functionality in order for accuracy. And that, I usually don't really mind that since I either cosplay or you know short films where it can be just tacked on. But yeah, if something is completely insane, that thing is gonna be made of foam and super glued to my body. 
and look okay from three positions, and that's it. Sometimes it's not that different from the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's very true. Yeah. As long as you yeah. only need it for a little bit. Of yeah, you're like, okay, okay, this one is just for test shoots. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. just going to tack that up there with some toss and pray. Yeah, yeah. 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 definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always surprised how much uh, work you ever feels that is like cosplay sometimes. Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes, sometimes I'd say that cosplayers come with a whole new skill set that some of the more professional costumers just haven't had, like the older ones who don't have the same varied experience that cosplayers do, because you, know, you have people that do soft goods, you have people that do home goods, and cosplay, you kind of have to do it all, so. Yeah, I've definitely experienced yeah. that. It's like, oh no, our shop can't do that in the four hours. And it's like, well, I'll do it with foam, just don't focus on it directly, <laughs> and it'll, it'll be okay. Um, and then, sort of to follow that, how do you guys go about doing your research? Um, like as artists, cosplayers, photographers, like all of this obviously takes a role in trying to make it as accurate as possible, so it's super believable and sort of everyone's just our belief search suspended. So, I don't know. anyone? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just drawing, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Um, I mean, it kind of depends on the context, uh, and also depending on. When I was doing, because even the earlier designs, I thought about it less. Like Storm and Zylog, I thought about it less. Largely because it's just, it is, like, that's kind of the fun of comic books, is that, like, you know, this is a world where clothes can light on fire and it can stretch. Or, like, I kind of like embracing that, like, this is all ridiculous. Um, this is a 10 foot tall dog. Let's, let's just kind of have fun with it. But on runway, it's, it's very much the opposite where everything has to work and everything has to be real, because that's kind of what the book is about. And so with that, it's all about real people I've, ever, like I've, I've seen in LA and real fashion and real styles in almost every outfit, which is an issue kind of burning, uh, recent issue. A lot of them come from real clothing, a lot of, so a lot of Pinterest, but there was an outfit I drew in, I think issue nine, and I drew the entire issue and it was done. And then Domino number one came out, and that had the exact same outfit. So after the book was done, I had to stop everyone and I had to like redraw all the pages because I was not going to have someone show up with the same dress that comes out later. I was like, refusing to. Um, so that's kind of the bite of, of picking real clothes is that anyone can pick real clothes. And so kind of after that, I was like, okay, now Nico has to have anything have costumes that I can, can alter. Um, and the issue I was just doing, I, I made entire dresses from scratch. Uh, and you know, with that, you know, I, spent, I spent a week researching you know, like references and different styles that I want and trying to get the right the motifs and patterns that fit the character that also can work because other people have to draw the, the costumes too. Um, so just, I mean, it's just a lot and then just kind of getting a lot of research to see what actually works and then kind of imagine wearing it and see if it's comfortable. What about when you're doing a redesign just completely for yourself that's not going to be drawing the book? Just, I, I've seen you, you do whole like, you know, teams and different characters in different universes. Do you have one you're asking about specifically? Um, no, not specifically. I was just kind of wondering about when you can make any new look for a character, kind of how you decide on it. Because your your looks are all very fashion-y and uh, not as... I don't know, super well, it kind of it, it kind of depends if like if I, I have something in mind. Like I don't I don't do those just to like oh, this is, that's what I'm gonna do today. It's, it's like there's something going at me, or like something that like I wish would have happened, uh, and I just kind of take the initiative to do it and I just sort of put it down. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think. There's like there's something recently where I did more casual than a superhero. Um, but it, it, yeah, it, it kind of depends on the context. It, all, it also stems from who the person is doing what, and that will decide everything about it because all clothes are part of design, and all design says something. So the more specific it can be, and the more realistic it can be about it, or like, the realistic to the world it is, uh, the better it's going to work, and the more it's going to stand the test, rather than just be something that is just frivolous and that doesn't make sense. Uh, all right. Uh, something coincidental because um, so I, I met uh, Chris outside, and it turns out that his 
Psylocke costume design because you know to, uh, to do cosplay and eventually cosplay photography everything begins from the artist because it's their imagination and from there we uh, we grow from that imagination and build around a world around that from our own we, we build on top of that and so I saw Chris's um, Psylocke design a year ago and I said wow this is a new, this is a new take on Psylocke and it's a, it's a functional costume and eventually I came, uh, we came up with a piece like this um, last year based on his design. So you, see, you, you can see how, um, how the growth of a design would go from artist to a cosplayer to eventually a cosplay photographer and uh, put together something new based on that seed of an idea. I mean, yeah, it all kind of like, it, it's, it's so interesting because it, it, all, it all just stems from like a random email one editor sent you. And I got <laughs> like, oh, what about this? Oh, okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, and it takes a while to kind of really kind of understand the gravity of it because, you know, a lot of the time it just feels like fan art. It just feels like something you're doing for fun and then somehow there's money in your account. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and then now it exists. And you're like, no, that's, that's not real. So it's, like, it's weird that, like, there's like a, like, I have a real style after that. Like, that's weird to me. And it's so much, like, it's always it's the gym lady or, you know, yeah. like, that is Psylocke. And so, like, you know, it, it's weird because it takes a life of its own. And then, they, then you start seeing all people wearing it, you know, like, like well, that, that's kind of weird. Like, where did you guys go with that idea, too? And I'm like, no, that's all. That's all right. What about, um, no, no. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what about for cosplay? Like, do you get your inspiration to find more from comic books or from movies or a mixture of both? I'm really inspired by comic books, and especially because the references can change so much from comic to comic, you know, depending on, even if it's the design, another artist is going to put the sash in a different place, and so on and so forth. Um, I really like to pick a story that I really connect with and I'm really excited by, and then a character that I'm really excited by who has an interesting outfit. And then at that point, I usually try and narrow it down to one particular page or panel from one particular artist, just because I want to make it 100% accurate, but I know I can't in general, but at least it'll be 100% accurate to this particular version. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of, and so I do find myself to be inspired by a lot of very specific artists and specific pieces of theirs. Um, so for photographers, photographers, um, so when you're setting your scenes, do you do it, you know, are you, do you have a certain scene in mind? Do you, do you have like a panel in mind? Or like, I need to recreate this panel exactly and it's going to be amazing? Or how do you go about that? For the most part, it's like, yeah, if you see a panel or, or something that's just for a moment in the movie or whatever, it just stands out in your head. You kind of want to see how you can pull that off, you know, your, your take on it. And every now and then I would do something that's exactly like, like, what's the panel go? Amanda was talking earlier. We did a shot, actually, I brought it with me, but yeah, we did a shot of the, uh, that scene from the Dark Phoenix saga where she destroys this whole world. And we did a take on that, which is pretty much an exact recreation, uh, except it's a real person instead of a, you know, a John Byrne page. Uh, it just depends. Like, if it's, uh, if it's something that really stands out, it's something that you always wanted to do, like I would just shoot it, I'll figure out how I have to have them pose. Like uh, Jesse and Amanda, you know, I would have them pose in ridiculous ways in the studio. I would tell them, trust me, just that'd be fine and it's done. You know, you, I know you feel stupid right now, but when this is done, you'll see it. And they've been very patient and they allow me to kind of stage um, the scene I wanted to do. It's like, it's almost like playing with your action figures, but you have real people. <laughs> yeah. If it hurts, it looks good on camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you'd say. Um, for example, for this uh, image of Psylocke, it was made out of seven different shots. Because you can't exactly pose somebody um, that way unless you're, they're multi-jointed in all sorts of joints, right? So we concentrate first on getting her lower half, the, the arms, the body, the head to pose properly. And for, for the hair, it's a long wig that I got off the con two years ago and you know we just put it on her head and the magical hanger or drumsticks oh. pull it out <laughs> click and you pull it out <laughs>
But in terms of inspiration, I, I look into a lot of um, panels, uh, comic book panels. I'm also a big video game um, fanatic, and most of the cosplay work I get to do somewhat age checks me, because <laughs> it's all about stuff that I find in my youth. Because these are the franchises, the properties that stick in your head, no matter um, no matter how old you get. Um, I mean, you know, way past um, 20s, 30s, you'd see all sorts of new characters, but nothing beats, for me, nothing beats what I watch Saturday morning, like Robotech. <laughs> oh. um, let's go back to the beginning of your cosplay experiences. Like, what was your first costume that you put together? How did you get into it? Like, how did you ladies get into your costume design? Where did this come from? I know, I know exactly. The first time was in Holland. We, we started two small countries. So our convention used to start like really, really small. And I came there, I was like, I don't know, 14 years old. And I saw all these people dressed up as like, what is this? What's going on? And it, it was just so wild. So I was like, I immediately was like, I have to do this. I want to try. And then very traditionally asked my mom, teach me how to sew. And then the next year, I did Lena Inverse from Slayers. And it was like, it was great. I made so many friends. I won an award for it. I don't know why. <laughs> and it was just such a good time. And I immediately got addicted to it. And cosplayed for about a decade before my job sort of took over my life. It was a good time though. My, uh, my story is kind of similar. Um, I grew up here in San Diego, which it is, it is not a very small convention, but oh, wow. yeah, every, every summer I would just see you know all these people coming into the city, dressing up, walking all around. And uh, I just started going when I was in high school. Um, I don't know if you would call them cosplays, but I would wear like, you know, a t-shirt and kind of a outfit like something or, you know, a Dr. Horrible t-shirt, something like that. Um, I think the first time I decided, okay, I'm really going to wear something that looks like something out of a comic book, going to be a good cosplay was in, uh, yeah, probably about 10 years ago, and I was Jean Grey as the Black Queen from the Dark Phoenix saga. Um, and I look, I like bought an off the rack corset and I used my own hair and so I, I look back at it now and I've redone it since and it's like, oh man, it's so ridiculous. But it was a lot of fun and it definitely gave me the bug to keep coming back and doing it. Well, I grew up in a small town in Texas where there was absolutely nothing besides hanging out in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> so, you know, not a lot of uh, cultural opportunities there. But I had a group of friends that decided to go to an anime convention when we finally could all try. So we all loaded up and someone had internet. Because I didn't have internet at that point. <laughs> that was yeah, it was a big thing. It was a <laughs> land. I'm sorry for the other Texans. But so we, she's like, oh, I, look, I saw this thing called cosplay. We should, we should cosplay just like whatever we want. So we just looked at pictures of anime characters on the internet, and that's how I ended up dressed like a not child appropriate character when we found out what the anime was. Devil Hunter Yoko for all of those who know animes. I feel um, like you see a lot of children. Oh, yeah. 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 As Yoko and boys. Right? <laughs> exactly. So I dressed like Devil Hunter Yoko and could not figure out why weird people wanted to take pictures of me. <laughs> But then after that, I really fell in love with it because we went to this anime convention and we really found our people. It was so amazing to go and to meet all these other nerdy people. And a year after that, I made a Boogie Pop Phantom and actually got the internet. <laughs> and it was great. And here I am. <laughs> this is about your... What you got into uh, the, the concert club? Okay. Cosplay photography. When did this begin? I used to just like I, I first uh, took the first cosplay I photograph was in 2002 at this con, and I photographed her because I'm like she is very accurate. Of course, you're talking about sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I took her photo. Uh, this is cool. And then I started. I really started to notice like all the people coming from costumes, and I was starting to notice also how. 
how incredibly accurate, intricate, and detailed these costumes are. And I really didn't think much of it until like maybe like the last ten, like maybe the last five years or so, when people were hiring like the various websites were hiring me to photograph conventions. Like I've done photos for you know sites like uh, Comics Alive and Comicbook.com, and I would take photos for them, and they really want more cosplay stuff. And it got to a point where I was taking a lot of cosplay photos, but I felt like it was getting stagnant because it's just people at the conventions more. And that's when I started moving towards doing uh, you know, the type of shoots I do now, which is the studio, and then we do like heavy post-production at the end. And yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. I, in, in the end, I kind of built some relationships with everyone that I worked with and photographed, and uh, they've been my willing collaborators in doing all these wacky shots. I can't draw, <laughs> so, but I always believed I was the creative type. So two things where my uh, cosplay photography began, because I, I work professionally back home since I do commercial stuff. And it, it's hard to differentiate yourself against other photographers. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog market out there. So, you know, and it's just something that I would embrace the fact that I'm a huge geek. And, every, and all the other photographers in the market, back market, well, we're cool, we're fashion photographers. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm the big geek out there. So I must have embraced it and put together my frustration for drawing, my love for comics and anime, and but um, mashing all together. So it was, a, it was a unique thing and it's something I stuck by for the past 10 years or so. And it's something I'm not going to stop with. So it's, um, I, because at the same time, I get whenever a new photo comes out, it feels good. It feels like finally my idea in my head. It's no longer just, you know, stick figures. Divulge to the audience any insider secrets, trade secrets about uh, what you guys do? Oh, okay. <laughs> I never forget that cosplay is meant to be fun. <laughs> like, if you feel like moving into a professional sphere, absolutely do it, but just have fun with it. You're here to meet other nerds and have a good time, and don't ever lose sight of that. It's, uh, I'd <laughs> say almost the same about the jobs. You end up working in the industry, sometimes you really have to step back and really appreciate what you're doing because when you're working, it can be so stressful and it, it's pretty intense. But then you realize, like, wow, I actually was doing the dream job that I wanted to do when I was a kid and um, started that all those years ago. So, I like, appreciate what you, what you do when you do it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> I have some practical practical ones. Uh, well, Jay mentioned his hanger trick, which I just learned shooting with him a couple <laughs> days ago, which is amazing. So you take a coat hanger and then you like loop the wig over it or, you know, through it that way. And then your buddy stands behind you and pulls the hanger and you can like do different angles and it was it's, amazing. It's a, it's a little trick that we used to do for shooting shampoo commercials. <laughs> yep. And also, chicken in those print ads, it's motor oil. Oh. Making them good. <laughs> it's not real, folks. <laughs> That's just... I, think, uh, I think my other best cosplay hack is um, this, this one's for women, but seriously, I found this so helpful. Um, you can get a thong panty liner and put it when you're wearing a bodysuit and just put that in your panties and you know, arrange things and then it'll keep everything smooth so you don't get any seams riding up or, you know, camel toe or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you get a picture back and you're like, oh my god, there's a weird wrinkle I can never post. I need to I think that's, a, that's another good one as well that I really learned from my job. Like, uh, one of the main things I do is make sure, like, right before the camera rolls, to make sure that the actor looks really good and that everything sits the way it should. And I feel like in cosplay shoots, like, bring a friend that has a good eye that will just put the dress back to the floor, you know, make sure that everything looks nice because it's, uh, photographers are busy with their shop. You're posing, so you can't only see your own outfit. So you really need like a, an extra person to make sure it's like, okay, that, that looks good, that looks good. Maybe just adjust that a little bit. Because that's what, uh, you know, like you would not want a label to stick out or a piece of tape to be shown. And, 
that's like really like that's really good. Like friends with good eyes. <laughs> that's, that's a good tip. That's my entire Comic Con this year. Every time I get costumes for myself, so I say you're the friend. I'm the friend. Yeah, friend. I'm like, okay. <laughs> this morning, I have to everyone to do that. Well, you know, something that takes two seconds, like moving some hair out of your face, two seconds to fix in person, then can become, you know, however long it takes Hours in Photoshop. Yeah, once again, Photoshop. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, on, on set, like, they have an entire team doing, you know, right. hair, <laughs> makeup, and clothes, and everything around them. So it's like, it takes it takes an army of people. To, like, actors, actors do not look that way in the morning, I can hear it. <laughs> Most of them don't. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> if you're a photographer and you're getting into this, uh, I would say common courtesy always ask permission before you take a photo. Yeah. I've seen way too many people, actually I've seen quite a few this year too, where they're just taking photos and without the permission of the person trying to photograph. You're not going to get anywhere with that. Your, your shots are going to look like crap. Uh, and, don't, and if they're not posing for you, what's the point? You know. So I don't know, just just be courteous. Don't don't be a jerk. Right. So I think um, we're going to open up the floor for questions. And there's a bunch of goodies up here. Uh, so hopefully you guys have some good questions to ask.